What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Keith, and I'm back with another reaction video. Man, today we got Bam Adebayo on surviving on $300 in a trailer park home. Bro, this house in the background is Bam's childhood home, bro. You can't see the letters because my face is in, is like in front of it. But, bro, was he was living in the... He got it out the mud for sure, bro. So, um, he said no one makes it out. We're going to see. I know how this, this, this goes when you're in poverty and how a lot of people don't make it out, bro. So it's a blessing that you, that you got out, bro. Now you got millions you can provide for your family and generations after you, bro. But yeah, man, um, like, comment, subscribe. Turn on them post notifications, man. We about to get into the video. I post videos every day. Tune in with me. Let's get it. Let's run it up, y'all. I come from a single wide trailer in the rural area of a small town in North Carolina. Like, nobody, if you go to my whole town, you'd be like, there's no way somebody makes it out of this. I was very shy when I was younger. And. Bro. I'm telling y'all, I know how it is in these small towns. My family is from North Carolina, bro. Um, I just know, like, growing up with my, my cousin from marriage, a lot of his friends, they ain't leave the town. Like, they ain't doing nothing with their life, bro. And that's the same, like, on the Eastern Shore. When I used to go on the Eastern Shore, a lot of people were scared of change, bro. They were scared to leave the Eastern Shore some of them guys could hoop. They was nice, bro. If they would have went somewhere else, they could have got scholarships. They could have went D1, all that, bro. Like, But people just be scared to, of a new environment. You got to take that leap and go somewhere else, bro. Get out of your town. Ain't nothing good coming from that. You got to go out of your comfort zone to be discovered, to be seen by somebody else, bro. Straight up. And I was... One of those kids that was really standoffish. My mom raised me to do everything right, be on time, uh, go to school, have perfect attendance. But I never said anything when I went to school. So my earlier years was like a struggle because I, I wanted friends, but I did not know how to communicate because it was always me and my mom. I knew how to communicate with my mom, but at the end of the day, I had to grow to, uh, to actually talk to people. Come here. That's the important thing about socializing your kids, bro. Like, when it's just you and your parent, some kids really don't know how to communicate. Like he said, they don't know how to communicate with, like, other kids. Like, they super shy. That's because they're not used to being socialized. They're not used to being around all their cousins. And I grew up around cousins. Like, it was a whole bunch of us, bro. So I knew how to, I know how to talk to people. Like, it's not hard for me to talk to people. I'm a quiet person naturally. I'm an introvert. But I can talk. That's why I can get up on this camera and just talk, bro. Like, it's not hard for me. Because I grew up playing sports. I grew up in a team environment. I grew up around a lot of cousins. We play, we talk. Like, I grew up going to the skating ring. Like, all type of stuff, bro, that just helped me socialize. Now I can talk to people. It's not hard for me to talk to people. It's not awkward for me to talk to people. But some people didn't grow up like that, man. So it's like you got to get socialize your kids, bro. Let them experience other people because in a real world, you got to network with other people. You can't be a loner, bro. Humans weren't made to be loners. Even though sometimes I'll be feeling like it. You got to socialize. Or you're going to go crazy. From where we come from. And then having to shift from a small mindset of, you know, I'm good where I'm at. And then going to playing basketball. Who? And now you're okay. going from city to city every weekend. It was definitely a, a shock to me because I didn't want to grow as a person. I was <gasps> in pool with the friends that I have. I don't need any more friends. Like, these are my friends until the day I die. At Jiffy Lube, we check, fill, inspect, and clean your vehicle so you'll know we'll car for your car like we car for our own. College was like my 
preparation for getting me ready for the NBA. And it kind of woke me up to what I thought. He was getting a bucket. He was dominant at Kentucky, bro. What the NBA was going to be like. Our schedule was packed from sun up to sundown. And that's where it really hit me that I was on my own and becoming an adult. So sitting in my sitting in my dorm, I had to figure out how I could understand being on time, getting my classwork done, going to the gym, extra hours in the gym, staying focused in the classroom, and I had to handle all of that at once. And sitting in my room, I remember breaking down because I was like, yo, why am I here at this point? You know, that's when you get in those phases where basketball is not going the way it's supposed to go. And then, obviously, the classwork just compounds on top of that to the point where it's like, why Why do I have to wake up at 6 a.m., go work out, come back, go to class, take tests, and then you walk around and you see all these regular students. They get to wake up at 9 o'clock, go to their 10 a.m. They don't have to do all these sprints that aren't guaranteed, guaranteeing anything. Hey. It guaranteed you a spot in the NBA, bro. Hey, what, one thing I can say about college, I'm going to hit on two points. One thing I can say about college, bro, I don't think it taught me anything. Well, it did teach me something for the real world. Responsibility, bro. You're on your own. Ain't no, your mom and dad not waking you up. You got to set your own alarm. You got to do your own work. You got to manage your time, manage your workload. That's the good thing about college. It prepares you for the real world. Manage, time management and workload management. Um, it's all responsibility for sure. But when he said like, he was wondering like other kids didn't have to do what he did, but other kids are not making millions like you are. So it paid off, bro. Them sprints, everything paid off, bro. That now you're a millionaire, bro. Now you don't got you can quit the NBA and never have to work a day in your life again. You can retire today and don't have to work, bro. That's what life is about, bro. Financial freedom, man. And those kids that was regular, they gotta work a job. Just like me. I gotta work a job. I mean, I don't have to. I could be an entrepreneur, but I work a job for now. Until I blow up on YouTube. So, uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe. Keep watching this video. <laughs> Watch this video all the way through. You feel me? College was a wake up for me, but I just had to figure out how to how to lock in and make everything simple, but make everything the main focus. She is one of those people who she's going to find a way. She's going to make a way. And even if she has nothing to work with, she's somehow going to make a way for me to have clothes on my back, food on the table, and I didn't really realize I was poor until I was probably like 16. Facts. Because my mom had done such a great job of comforting me and making me feel like I had enough, but also telling me like, we don't have a lot. <laughs> Bro, it'd be like Black moms, bro. I mean, if you black, you can relate, bro. Your mom, she like super, superman. She can make something out of nothing, bro. Like, women are amazing, bro. Women are amazing. Moms are amazing. Um, Shout out to dads, too. Shout out to dads, too. But you got some moms out here that's making it happen, man. They deserve a round of applause. No bull crap. They making it happen out of nothing, man. He said his mom made him feel like they was good. You might have not had everything, but you had enough to survive, bro. Eat every day, got clothes on your back, all that, bro. You might not have had everything you wanted, but you had the essentials, bro, and that gave you that grind to go and get it. It gave you that grind to go and get it, man. It's a lot of people, they cut a lot of people that's like successful in sports and stuff like that. Bro, they had, they ain't have top of the line growing up. A lot of people had to, they got that grit and that, that dog in them from not having, bro. And it's not, it's not nothing to brag about. 
Definitely not nothing to brag about, but it's just people's circumstances, man. Poverty, it don't, it don't uh, pick and choose. It can affect anybody. So, yeah, man. That's all y'all say on that. Those people, she was always driven to. Shout out, Mama Adebayo. Also, make sure we were both strict. So having that moment of me and my mom being at that table in New York and you see a, you see the ticker going down and you get that moment of with whatever pick the team selects and it's your name, it's like everything that you've been through, it's like a, a matter of 10 seconds span where you like, damn. And then you remember everything that you went through, you, your family, parents, Whoever was with you going through anything in life at that point. For sure. It all goes through your goes through your mind and you walk across the stage and it's like most people don't get to No dude Dude like keep a professor. He look like he's smart as shit right here. Not bam, the other dude, I forgot his name. Buddy look like he he can calculate any problem in, the, in his between his dome, between his ears. He can add up any equation in his head and shit. This opportunity. No, I gotta make the jokes, bro. I gotta make the jokes. I'm sorry. Cooling your heating system on the fritz? Dripping faucet. Look no further than the pros at Blue Dot. I wanted people to know my name, who I was, what I represented, and what I come from. The first time I really understood that it was a business was my rookie year. And a guy from my summer league team was at the gym. So I pull up, his car started outside the front door. And I'm thinking like, all right, he's just putting stuff in the car, whatever. And he was like, nah, man, I got cut. Well, I'm gonna just work out and try to find a new deal. So by the time I walk past him and tell him good luck, I sit in my locker and like two minutes later, the guy who, he got cut, the next guy for his job walked in. And so that's when it hit me, it was like, it's a business. They don't care about your feelings. They care about the end goal, which is winning. Facts. If you're not doing your job or you're not cutting it, you bull crapping, we're going to get you out of here because it's somebody that, that can come in and yeah, they can do your job. That's the harsh reality, bro, of professional sports, man. A lot of NFL players talk about it, NBA players talk about it, how you can be cut. And they don't give a fuck where you going. They ain't they gonna not gonna help you move. They not gonna help you do nothing. Pay your rent, pay your mortgage, nothing. You better save your bread while you have it, bro. Or invest it wisely or have some side hustles because if you're not that main guy, LeBron James, like Bam, he's not gonna get cut, bro. Maybe later down the line, he's a who he's a baller, bro. But the mediocre guys, you interchangeable. So you gotta bring that dog every day, bro. Cause they don't care. Terry Crews said he got cut by like so many different teams. That's what got him into acting and stand up and stuff like that, bro. He was like, man, he wanted to commit suicide. That's how bad it was, bro. But his wife hold, held him down, bro. It, that shit real, bro. Just like a job. They don't care about you. They going to cut you just like this. Fast as I could do that, you could be gone. And they don't care about your mortgage. Nothing. It's a business, bro. It's about the guala. It takes an effort, a sacrifice. And the mission. I mean, just a mentality. Pull up. To really put your body on the line to go through that. Because a lot of people be like, nah, I don't want to play defense. I just want to go play offense because it's fun. It's funner than getting stops, you know. Everybody always looks at the last column, which is how many points did he score in the game. Right. And people forget that that other side of the court exists because of the entertainment business. So for me, it's just, it's that will, it's that passion, it's that mentality. It's what I've been through. And it's just one of those niches that I know I have. I want to get defensive player of the year just so I can have the award. Yeah. Everything just being consistent. 
I feel like the hardest thing to do in this lifetime is be consistent every day. You know, I feel like that's a standard that I'll try to uphold this year. Bro, he's speaking facts, though, man. Like, I feel like it's so many distractions with social media, like all the stuff that goes on in the world, bro. And it's just like, you just, you never know, man. Like, you are... You can get distracted so fast if you're not focused, bro. I post videos every day. I make myself do it. Like, I could be dead tired in the bed laying down. I make myself get up and go do a video. You got to do a video today. Get up and do a video, bro. Get up and do two videos. I got to do it. When You, you got to focus yourself and lock in on something. Like, that's one of the work, the hardest things to do nowadays. And sometimes I get unfocused too, bro. So I can attest to that. Sometimes I go do something before I make a video. And knowing I, bro, make the video first. The video is more important. But it's like sometimes you want to enjoy yourself too, bro. It's a lot of distractions, man. But guess what? Staying focused is what's going to get you there. That's going what's going to change your life, bro. While everybody not working and you working... That's what's going to change your life, bro. Straight up. He's speaking facts, man. I always get a pinch from moment when I do get to walk into the arena. You think about the history of some franchises. Like, Dwayne Wade was my teammate. Thank you. I still get those pinch from moments because it's just, this is the history of our franchise. Special so delivery. Walking through there, it's like you get to see when they went on those amazing rounds with the big three. You get to hear about the history of when D Wade and UD won the first one. So yeah, I still get those pinch for them. Hey, this was a mob. Mario Chalmers, D Wade, LeBron, Chris Bosch, the big three, Haslam, the dirt doing all the dirty work, playing defense. They had a mob, bro. Shot. kids are our future and you know getting them to understand that like they have a life that matters facts no matter where they are on earth like their their life matters to somebody to someone to whoever it is but you know this camp is really for them to understand that like bam at a bio cares about your life for sure man the kids is our future man that's why I coach youth football cause it's like my coaches gave back to me they could they they changed my life for the better, bro. They left a great impact on my life. Um, a lot of my teammates they they in the streets. Some of them dead. Some of them locked up, bro. Like, and it's just your circumstances, bro. Like some kid, I mean, some kids take it and just do good with it. And some kids, I mean, they just fall to they gotta adapt to the environment, bro. Or they just fall victim to what they around, bro. Um, if that's all you know, nobody teaching you anything better. You're going to do what you see, bro. You're going to do what you're around 95% of the time, man. So that's why I give back to the kids. I coach youth football um, and T-ball because I'm just trying to give back to the kids, man. I want them to know that you can do other things. You can play sports. You can go to school. You can... Be an entrepreneur, bro. You can do whatever you put your mind to, man. It's really your life. And it's up to you how you live it, bro. Straight up, man. Dropped off the spin move. Like me and my team Mr. MVP. Finals twice out of the last four years. MVP so finalist. Every year they'd be like, oh, Miami is a dark horse. Miami's not good enough to do that again. The first time was a fluke. And it, it's a lot of disrespect. Like I said, we've been to two finals in the last four years. We've been to three Eastern, Eastern Conference finals in the last four years. And I don't think anybody else in the East has done that in the last four years. And we're doing it with 60% of our roster being undrafted. And helping us win and somewhat at a point carrying us to the finals you know for me i feel like that should be a bigger story than it is everybody always seems to be shocked when we're at the top again hey 
Hey, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to comment on his last uh comments. They just need one more piece, bro. They need another score or something, bro. They got the role players. They got Bam, a big, a good big man, great defender. Jimmy, a dog, scorer. He just needs somebody else to score with him, bro, to push them over the head edge. Tyler Hero. He copped out, bro. He was supposed to come back in and ball, push them over the hump. Uh, two years ago, he decided to sit out. Like, what, bro? Come on, man. Are you a hooper? They paying you all this bread. Go get a bucket, bro. They need you. Your team needs you. But, yeah, man. This was, this was, this was, this was good, bro. Definitely is inspirational that if somebody else can make it out the mud, you can do the same thing. Or if you're in a slightly better position, it's no excuse on why you can't. Do what you want to do, bro. Um, you might not be 6'8 or 6'9, 6'10, however tall Bam is. Um, so NBA might not be in your in your future, but being an entrepreneur or just going after the dream career, whatever you want to do in life, man, you can do it, bro. Just put your mind to it and grind towards that goal and be focused, bro. That's all I got, man. I hope y'all enjoyed this video, man. I'm definitely inspired. Shout out to Bam uh, Adebayo. Um, yeah, man. Got it out the mud and now he a millionaire, bro. Now you can kick your feet up if you wanted to. But he got he's young. He got years left of basketball. But yeah, man. Like, comment, subscribe. Turn on them post notifications, man. So you can see when I post. You can log in with me and tune in every day, bro. And then... um. Yeah, I appreciate the support from y'all, y'all, all y'all comments. I like interacting with y'all, man. But yeah, comment what y'all want me to react to next, and I got y'all. I might do a Gary Payton video next. The glove, straight defense, you feel me? We might have to do that, man. I like the throwback videos. But yeah, I'm about to get out of here, y'all. Y'all be smooth, man. Peace.